Welcome to the Herbal Library District's Yarn Craft Club tutorial for knitting machine hats. Whether you've reserved one of our machines or are crafting from home, let's get started with the following supplies. You'll need a tapestry needle, which is just a large blunt needle with a big eye for threading yarn, scissors, and a button that's either an inch or an inch and a half in diameter if you're making a pom-pom. If you're making a pom-pom, you'll need that pom-pom maker and of course your knitting machine. Now let's talk yarn. You'll need some in size four. This number can be found on the wrapper of each skein of yarn. Just look for the image you see here on the right. Different sized yarns will show a different number on the label. And not all size four yarns are created equal. Feel free to try out different brands, but the three I have listed here have brought consistent success. These machines are picky, and if you're new, I recommend sticking with something we know will bring success. Once you've gotten the hang of it, you can try other yarn and be prepared to test out the best way to make it work. The following are great starting points. I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby, Red Hearts with Love Line, and the Big Twist's Value Line. The Big Twist can be found at Joanne Fabrics. All of these brands come in a lovely variety of colors. Their multicolored skeins are a lot of fun to use. This should provide a multitude of options to get you started. Step one, casting on. That's what we call loading the machine with its first round of yarn. Most yarn unravels two ways, both from the outside and from the center. I like to reach in and find the end that comes from the middle of the skein. This way, once the machine gets going and there's no tension on the yarn, I just let it sit there while the machine does the work. If you choose to use the end that begins on the outside of the skein, you'll need to stop every couple of rounds to let more yarn loose. The machine won't be able to knit if it has to tug too hard on the skein it's pulling from. The yarn should flow freely from the skein into the machine. Crank the handle of your machine until the white pin is raised up and positioned directly in front of the yarn guide. With the tail of your yarn in your right hand and the rest of the yarn in your left, lay the yarn underneath and in front of that white pin. Let go of the tail yarn with your right hand. With your left hand, begin weaving the yarn in and out of the pegs as you slowly crank the machine. I find that the suction cups don't keep the machine terribly stable. I have to twist the crank at the base of the handle for this step until I have my left hand free again. The yarn, because we started out in front of the white peg, should now wind around behind the next peg, in front of the next peg, behind the next peg, and so on until you reach the white peg again. Work slowly, making sure not to miss any pegs and that the yarn is being caught as you work around. When you return to the white starting peg, bring the yarn up in between the last peg in the round and the white peg and slide it into the yarn guide. It should pop slightly into place. Then, if you're using one of the kinds of yarn we recommended at the beginning of this video, we've found that the second tension hole works best. If you've gone rogue and you're doing your own thing, then, well, may the odds be ever in your favor. You might need to start your project over a few times until you find the right settings that are right for you. Step two, knitting the hat. Now the fun begins. You already saw me set my skein of yarn in a bucket directly below the machine so that it doesn't roll all over the room. Pull several yards free from the skein and let it sit in your bucket. Restart your counter by pressing its button. Watch your counter as you knit. They sometimes skip counting rounds. Hold the foot of the machine nearest you by the crank to keep it stable and begin cranking your machine. Go a bit slowly at first, making sure that your yarn is always feeding freely into the yarn guide and never tugging on the skein. Once you have three or four rounds of knitting, you can pick up the pace. Now you'll continue cranking until you reach 104 rows or more or less to your preference and if you'll be changing colors. Step three, changing colors. 
This process works for any color change, whether you are changing colors to make stripes after only a few rounds, changing colors halfway through for a different colored lining, or simply rejoining the same color due to a broken strand or running out of yarn and needing to add in a new skein. I like to make sure that I'm at the beginning of the round before I change colors, which means that the white pin should be just to the left of the yarn guide. The pins on your machine are also numbered, and the white pin is number one. Use scissors to snip your working yarn several inches away from your tension guide. I usually try for a six inch tail. Gently pull the yarn out of the tensioner and up and out of the yarn guide. Don't let the yarn slip out from under the pink pin to the right. Lay the tail yarn on the inside of the machine. It should lay between the last pink pin and the first white pin. Ready your new yarn in the same way you prepared your starting yarn, with some yardage flowing free in your bucket below the machine. Hold the tail of the new yarn in your right hand and the rest of the yarn in your left, and hook the yarn underneath the white pin so that the tail lays in between that left pink pin and the right white pin. It should fall in the same place as your old yarn color's tail. Gently pop the working yarn back into the yarn guide and slip into the second tension gauge slot. Pull a few yards of yarn free and let it rest in the bucket. Begin slowly cranking the handle. The yarn should catch on its own and knit normally. Pay special attention as your joining point comes back around. After a few slow rounds, you should be able to pick up the pace again and leave those ends dangling until you're done knitting. For me, in this example, I'm using my color change for the lining, and I'll knit another 52 rows this way so I'll end up at the 104 row mark. Don't let your project touch the table. When your project gets long, gently fold up the inside of the work so that it continues to hang above the table. Continue knitting along normally, folding your work into the center as necessary. Do this gently as to not disturb any of the yarn on your machine's pins. Step four, casting off. When your hat has reached your desired length, I usually do between 104 and 110 rounds altogether, which is something I arrived at just by trial and error. If you want a fold up brim, you'll need several more rounds than if you're making one without. It's time to remove the hat from the machine. We're gonna start by cutting our yarn again, but this time we're gonna leave a substantially longer tail. We'll use this tail to stitch the hat off the machine and also to seam it together to the other side of the hat. I find that measuring a tail that is twice the length of the machine is enough for me. However, if you're new to this process, feel free to leave an even longer tail just in case. Once you've measured your tail, snip your yarn and free it from the yarn tensioner and guide. Be careful not to tuck too hard and disturb any of the yarn resting in the pins. Thread the tail you just cut through a tapestry needle and lay the remainder of the yarn in the middle of the machine. Now there should be no yarn in the yarn guide while you slowly crank the handle a few pins forward. Looking at the last pink pin before the white pin, the hook should not be visible and should be sunken inside the machine and a loop of yarn is resting around two nubs. Thread your needle in between those nubs from the inside of the machine and pick up that loop of yarn on your needle. Gently pull the yarn through that loop. Make sure not to accidentally pop any nearby loops off of their nubs. This will separate that stitch from the machine so that no yarn remains on that peg. Now you'll repeat separating each of the rest of the stitches from the machine in this same process. Slowly crank the handle so that a few more loops are accessible and use the needle to pick up the next loop. Go slowly and one by one at first.
Once you have a hang of the process and have created a little slack in your work as more and more of the hat separates from the machine, you can pick up more than one loop with a single pass of the needle if you like, though there's nothing wrong with taking them one at a time. The last loop you pick up should completely free your hat from the machine. Step 5. Securing ends. If you never changed colors during your hat making process, you can skip this step and move on to step 6. The process for securing ends is the same whether you have many joins due to stripes or only a single join from a lining. First off, you'll want to make sure to turn your hat inside out. This should be the side where all of your ends are hanging. But another way to tell is that the right side of the hat stitches look braided and the wrong side of the hat stitches look like little bumps. Locate the two ends of the join you'd like to secure. Tug both ends slightly so that they are snug but not overly tight. Tie a few simple overhand knots to keep the tails in place. You can choose to trim down your ends at this point or leave them as is. The ends here won't be visible after the next step. Repeat this process for all of your joins. Step 6. Seaming the hat. This is the last step in the hat process. We'll merge together the two raw seams to create our double layered hat. Turn the hat right side out. You'll notice the point where you joined the yarn is barely noticeable. Pull one half of the hat back inside the other. Now you have a double layered tube with both edges at the same end. Thread the long tail that was used to cast off the stitches from the machine onto the tapestry needle. Line up the tail attached to your needle with the tail from the other edge of the hat. Once everything is in position, look for the little loop stitches on the edge of the hat that look like they're hanging onto a long horizontal strand of yarn. We'll be alternating sending our needle through one stitch like this from each edge. Leave the other edge's tail where it is. We will only be working with the long tail attached to the sewing needle for now. Slide your needle underneath the first vertical loop after the tail on the front edge and reach back with the same needle and slide it also under the next stitch on the back edge. Pull your yarn through. Make sure not to let your needle split through the yarn. The needle should slide completely under the strands. We will be pulling on this string to cinch the hat shut and if the needle has split through the yarn instead of under the stitches, it will catch and make it difficult to close. Repeat sliding your needle under the stitch on the front edge and then the next stitch on the back edge until you've worked all the way around your hat. Just like casting off, once you get the hang of it, you can pick up more stitches at a time with your needle. Just make sure to alternate between front and back edges.
keep working in this way until you get all the way back around to your other tail. Once you've reached the other tail, we can begin tugging on each tail to cinch the hat shut. This is a delicate process. Don't tug too vigorously or your yarn might snap and closing your hat will be much more difficult. Take your time and pull gently a little on each tail until you are able to snug it up to your preference. I have found that when I finish my hats, one tail seems to be running clockwise around the hat and the other counterclockwise. Regardless of whether or not this is true for you, I'd suggest identifying from which direction your tail is coming so you can pull in the same direction and not against it. This will make the stitches slide along more easily. Another note is to take a look inside the hat while you are cinching. Flip it inside out and note if there are any long loose threads hanging down before you get too cinched up. You can tug on these threads, if you find them, and find out where to pull to get them hidden away. I've also found that sometimes I'm tugging and I reach a standstill where nothing seems to move anymore. I'll actually pull the hat back apart at this point and start tugging again. This helps to loosen up the stitches and give me more room to slide everything along when I start tugging again. Once everything is closed up nicely, tie the two tails together in several overhand knots. You can trim the extra long tail down to size if that makes it easier to work with. Thread your tapestry needle with both yarn tails. As close as you can to your knot, send the needle through a single layer of the hat. Snip off any excess yarn and stretch the hat out to make the tails disappear into the layers of the hat. And now you have a hat! Strangely enough, in my research, someone suggested that if your hat starts taking on a weird flared out shape near the edge, give it a good smack on a table to put everything back into place. It really works. This is a natural step in hat making for me now. <laughs> step 7. Making and attaching a palm. There are also plenty of ready-made palm options you can purchase in craft stores or online if you don't want to make your own. Grab your pom-pom maker. We got this one on Amazon. It comes with several different sized tools that'll make different sized palms. I'm gonna use the largest option, but they all work the same. I believe there are also tutorials online for making DIY cardboard versions of this tool. Choose the yarn you wanna use. I'm gonna use two strands at the same time. You can combine even more than that if you like, or you can just use one. Open one set of wings on your pom-pom maker. Make sure you're working around both sets of wings at all times. Hold the device and the tails of your yarn in one hand and use the other to wrap both strands of yarn at the same time around the wings of the tool. I find that if I wind the yarn in even layers, the palm has a better shape when I finish and needs less trimming. Keep winding yarn around the whole U shape of the wings until it is very full and the U shape of the wing disappears. Hold the yarn in place and close the wings. If you have wound enough yarn on the wings, this closing action should keep everything tight and stable. Cut your yarn. Open the other set of wings on the tool. Repeat the process of holding the tool and yarn tails in one hand and using the other hand to wrap the yarn around the wings until they are full.
Fold the wings shut when they are full and cut the yarn. Now the tool should be holding all of your wrapped yarn in place and you can grab a very sharp set of scissors. I recommend detail scissors or thread snips. Hold the pom-pom maker in front of you so that you can slide your scissors underneath the layers of wrapped yarn and along the groove that separates the wings. Snip all of those layers of yarn apart. Repeat on the other side of the tool. Cut a nice long separate piece of yarn in a matching color. Slide the yarn into the machine along that groove that we just exposed by cutting through the layers of yarn. Set the tool on the table in front of you and tie both ends in an overhand knot. Like cinching the hat together, don't pull so tightly that you snap your yarn. However, if that does happen, just cut a new long strand of yarn and try again. Pull the knot as tightly as you can without snapping it. To give the palm extra strength, I take turns wrapping one tail one way around the groove and the other tail the other way around the groove and tying another knot and pulling tight. Then I tie a few more knots for good measure. The long strand of yarn we're using will be the only thing holding all of those little bits of yarn we just cut together. That's why it's important the yarn is wound tightly around the groove. Otherwise, when you take the palm out, little strands of yarn are liable to fall out of your palm. Don't cut your tails. Open each set of wings and separate each half of the tool. Reassemble the tool and set aside. Now you have a palm. You can give it a few good whacks on the table to fluff it out and trim any out of place strands with scissors. Thread each tail of the palm onto a tapestry needle. Send the needle through the top of the hat. Open the hat so you can see and work with the tails from the inside. Send each tail up through a different hole on a large button. I had to use my tapestry needle to poke each tail into the buttonholes because my needle was too big for the holes. Use whatever method works for you. Slide the button down to the top of the inside of the hat and pull snug. Tie a bow to keep the palm in place. I use a bow so that if the palm needs repair or I want to switch it out, I can just untie the bow to remove it. And that is absolutely it. Congratulations on your knitting machine hat. My name is Paige and if you're watching this tutorial in the library right now and have any questions, feel free to ask for me and if I'm available, I'm happy to help. 
Though this video was created specifically for use with the Oroville Library District's Centro 48 pin knitting machines and supplies, feel free to use this tutorial at home or with different brands of machines. The basic principles still apply. Give us a call at the library to reserve our meeting room and one or up to four of our knitting machines so you or you and your friends can use this tutorial to enjoy this project whenever your schedule allows. Bring your own yarn, but use our machines, pom-pom makers, buttons, and scissors. Thanks for watching and happy knitting.